59. We'll give it a couple more minutes. <laughs> All righty. Um, so let's see. Uh, Ken, are you able to see the uh, count of how many people are in the room? Yep, you have just under 30. Okay. All right, well, I will give it, let's see. My computer says it's 8 a.m. sharp right now. Um, let's, let's give it another minute and then we'll get started. Uh, are there any other quick questions in the meantime? Okay, so I, I have a question for I you. Have one. Um, I have go one ahead. For you real quick. We were okay. supposed to get the one box that looks like this, right? Yes. Okay. I thought I thought it was just one box, but I wanted to make sure. Uh, that that's true. Um, the pallets and crates will be arriving before Wednesday. No, just <laughs> 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 okay, that's cool. Pallets and crates <laughs> work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm game. I'm game. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think actually we'll we'll just go ahead and stick with one box. Oh, All righty then. So shall we get started, everyone? Oh, actually, I do have a quick question for you. Um, I'm a little bit new to the Zoom interface myself. So right now I'm sharing screen one. Can all of you see thumbnails of yourselves? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to move that down out of the way so that you can see the, uh, the slideshow. And we'll go ahead and start this baby up. Uh, let's see here. Julie, is that? And here we go. Welcome one and all to the Cyberbot distance version of the workshop. Uh, it's exciting to be able to be doing this because um, I've uh, I've done a lot of traveling teaching these to groups of teachers over the last 20 years and um, to be able to reach you in different um, parts of the United States instead of a single area is really um, really something I've been waiting for for a long time. Um, by the way, can you see the uh, slideshow? Are we all good there? Yes. Okay, thank you oh, for the yeah. thumbs up. Um, now, uh, when we're done with this workshop, you'll have uh, a robot that resembles this, and um, it is something, it's a great learning tool that you can use to facilitate lots of lessons in, um, in the STEM area, uh, primarily uh, programming with Python and uh, intro to electronics, and then there's a fair amount of math, and uh, we also have a cybersecurity series that goes with it. Um, so there's, there's just a, a it, it facilitates many, many different kinds of lessons and is extremely useful in the classroom. Um, my name is Andy. I've been working for Parallax for uh, about 20 years. Uh, Parallax is in Rockland, California, and um, we've been making microcontrollers uh, since 1987. Um, we... Uh, were probably the first company to make microcontrollers approachable uh, by non-electronic specialists and engineers. And so um, uh, having done that, we also um, started working in education. Um, and so we've, we've been doing curriculum for uh, the last 20 years or so. And we currently have a staff of 20. Uh, let's see here. If you're wondering what a microcontroller is, I think that's an important thing to, to talk about briefly. Uh, a microcontroller is the small computing device that has a preloaded program, um, for example, in your microwave oven. Um, it has a microcontroller that spends all day and night waiting for you to press one of the numbers on the keypad to tell it you know, how long to uh, reheat your cereal or coffee. Um, okay, now, uh, do we have, um, let's see here, do we have Chuck? Morning. Good morning, Chuck. Um, uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, three members of cyber.org with us today. Um, Chuck is our, um, I would say, our ground control. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, Chuck, would you like to take a moment to talk about um, yourself, Josh, Matt, sure. and ISERC? I'm sure. sorry, cyber.org. <clears throat> 
Sure. Um, yep. So uh, the Andy's Andy's mistake is a perfect segue. So uh, my name is Chuck Gardner. I'm the director of curriculum for Cyber.org, formerly known as NYSERC. Uh, if you've ever attended uh, the a workshop from NYSERC, go down to the bottom of your main Zoom window and give me a thumbs up. If you've ever attended a NYSERC workshop, uh, let me see thumbs up. Got a couple folks. Welcome. Or, or thank you for, for joining us again, I should say. Uh, for those who are new, welcome. <clears throat> um, I'm joined today uh, by three of my cyber, uh, two of my cyber.org colleagues, uh, Josh Coriel and um, Matt Kinman, uh, which we're both logged in and uh, we're, we're thrilled to be part of this project with Parallax and, uh, and joining them on uh, the development and, and support of the cyberbot with microbit curriculum uh, and professional development. So uh, for anyone with any questions during the workshop, um, me and my team are gonna be here to help you out. We've got some breakout rooms available. Uh, we're happy to, uh, to, to break you away from the main, main room if you need some help connecting or coding or, or anything that comes up today um, so that we don't, uh, we've only got 90 minutes with Andy. So we wanna make sure we make effective use of the time. Uh, let me know in the chat and we'll, we'll set up a breakout room and you'll work with one of those two fine individuals. Uh, the session today is 90 minutes. We're recording. It'll be available afterwards. It's also streaming on Facebook. So uh, hi to all your friends and peers who are following us on Facebook. And, um, you know, that, that's about it. Anything we can do to help, please uh, let us know in the chat. Andy, thanks. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, yeah, and so if, if you get stuck anywhere, you can also just give us a shout out and say, hey, can I... Um, can I meet with somebody in uh, one of the breakout rooms? And then um, as, as Chuck mentioned, it's uh, going to be on YouTube afterwards. I'll be emailing you the link to that. And, um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, if, you, if you feel like you've gotten behind or anything, we can get you caught up um, either mm -hmm. through that, that YouTube video or um, I can even make contact with you after the meeting to make sure that um, you're ready for Wednesday, if, if anything. Um, if you get stuck or get disconnected from the workshop. All righty. Um, so Parallax, we do our manufacturing here in the U.S. Um, this, uh, this room is about um, 20 yards where I'm sitting in our building. Um, this is a, uh, this shows where everybody's at. And I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be able to, um, to do one of these classes instead of in a particular area, uh, going to uh, several different highly populated areas, just being able to reach you wherever you are is great. Um, so uh, a lot of you from, from what you filled out in the, um, in the application, uh, it looks like every, everybody, there, there, there's, a, there's a very wide range of experience. We have, some, uh, we have some folks with some experience in many of these areas, um, some folks with a lot of experience in all these areas, and some folks with very little experience. And so um, we're going to err on the side of caution and go slowly through um, some of the material that, uh, um, but we'll also try to keep some challenges for those of you who um, maybe want to work ahead. Um, so this is, uh, the Cyberbot has been in circulation now for just over a year and, um, and it's, it's really been working out well in the classroom and, um, that's about all I have to say about that. I'm hurrying through these slides because I, I want to make sure that we, uh, get through, um, today's goals, especially. Uh, so we'll, we've already talked a little bit about the Cyberbot. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of you can connect your microbit to your computer, write a program, and load it in. Um, in doing so, you're going to be um, learning about the uh, Python editor that you'll be using for uh, the rest of the sessions and also hopefully in your classroom. Um, and uh, th there's some, there's some, Software, gee, how do we do this? I haven't seen this before uh, kind of moments that, that uh, we'll all have together um, as, as we get used to the, um, the system. It's, it's, uh, it's an online programming tool. And so um, you, you may find it has some new ways of doing things that you're not familiar with, but it's, it's definitely the way things are going and it's well worth learning. Um, in general, we want to have a good time. I, I think having fun is a, a really good indicator of um, what your students are going to do. I, I mean, we, we want to have a, kind of a motivating, um, enjoyable experience. And um, so uh, 
along the way, we want to make sure to uh, remove any any um, any uh, hurdles that you're going to run into in the classroom by actually going through the tough parts and the hurdles uh, here in the classroom. Um, so, and then by the end, we want to have your uh, your cyberbot built up and and you feeling confident and and ready to uh, use the resources to teach it in your classroom. Um, we're going to have uh, some awards and there will be uh, some prizes sent out for the awards uh, in three categories, um, animal coworker, biggest fail and biggest win. So um, as an example of a, a winner from a previous workshop, we have uh, uh, this teacher here who um, has I listened to the previous Zoom. I hope I heard it right. He said he goes to school even during the lockdown because there's 400 animals that he has to feed on a regular basis. Outrageous. Um, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> um, so biggest fail is uh, we really like this one. Um, oh, darn it. Okay. I don't know why this video is not playing, but... Um, yeah, it looks like I might not have access to it. Um, all right, so the, the, the biggest fail I will show you later. Uh, it has to do with um, putting something upside down and so nothing apparently seemed to work. And uh, we wanted to feature that because I've also taken some, a couple of tech support calls on it and I can guarantee you that um, you know, within the first couple of years, at least one of your students and one of your classes is going to do that while they're putting together their Cyberbot. And wow, okay. Um, so the biggest winner for the previous session was one where uh, what we did was we went through and used um, individual sensors. And um, when you, uh, so the, 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 the elected biggest winner was one who combined two of the sensors so that the robot could um, detect different types of obstacles and it made it a more robust autonomous navigator. Andy? Yes. I think you've won this round. You know, I think you're right. <laughs> I, will, um, okay, I, will, I will post that in the biggest fail uh, category. What I'm gonna do is um, email you links to uh, PowerPoint slideshows where we can all um, post our our biggest wins and biggest fails. I'll go ahead and see if I can grab a segment from the, the YouTube recording of this and, and leave that as my biggest fail. Um, I don't know if I win any prizes though. So uh, discussion. Uh, if, if you don't already feel comfortable to jump in, please know that we encourage you to unmute yourself. Um, jump in and um, say or ask whatever you're going to say or ask. Um, here are some key links to, uh, whoa. Um, so, so these are some key links and um, I'm going to paste this one into the, uh, into the chat. So just while, while Andy's getting that in there, just to let everybody know, the chat's blowing up because I asked folks to check in with their name and their um, state. If you want to give me city and location, that's fine too, but um, we're checking in and we got folks from all over, um, like, like Andy's map indicated, East Coast to West Coast. Um, some folks got up early, West Coasters, and some are about ready for lunch, East Coasters. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely got the biggest fail going on here. Um, copy. Now, where is the chat? I just put it in there, Andy. Oh, thank you so much, Chuck. Yep. All righty. Uh, yep, so Lori, it was just shared. I'm going to share it again. Oh. Looks like our list of participants is up to 42, Andy. We've got a full house today. Excellent. Give me a, I, uh, in the reactions window, give me a thumb up if you have good weather. Give me a clap if you have bad weather today. So we'll, we'll know who's on the East Coast because they'll get claps. 
Yeah, if you can, if you can engage with the Zoom window, give me a thumb up for good weather, give me a hand clap for bad weather. We got a lot of good weather today. A couple of hand claps. Good deal. I'm gonna give one more try at the chat um, interface because I really want that and it went behind a window somewhere, I think. Control H. <laughs> We got 170 right. degrees in one location. No hurricane from Denise White. Sauna weather from Cecilia. Thank you. Matt, where is 170 degrees? I'm going to scroll up and see if I can find where you are. But you know, I'm in Lancaster, California. Oh, right, right. All right. Okay. Um, it looks like I might have to go sans chat here. Um, yeah, my chat window disappeared behind something and I cannot find it. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, this is a book that is available on Amazon and also on the Parallax website in, um, today's homework. When I send it out, I'll go ahead and, um, include a link to this. Uh, it's, it's got some of uh, the formalized Python introduction. And, and if you um, are feeling not entirely confident on Python programming or, or teaching it, uh, this will be one of, the, um, one of the resources that can help you out. I cleaned out the used book section of Amazon for that book. I got six copies, so. Oh, okay. They, well, might, they might have replenished the supply, but I always buy the used books and then I just pass them out. I see. Um, yeah, that's interesting. An interesting way of uh, getting your classroom equipped. Um, yeah, we do have some new copies. Okay, so um, this was uh, at the USA Science and Engineering Festival. This young fellow hung out at the Parallax booth for a couple of days experimenting with the, um, the Cyberbot and other Parallax robots and um, and he, he did a nice YouTube, which is uh, in the link in, in this slide's notes um, th that you can follow. Uh, and he, uh, the, the way the Cyberbot motivated him was just kind of a perfect example of, of why we think it's an important tool for learning. Um, for Python and robotics, uh, the, the robot is, it, it offers a, a way of, of seeing the results of the code you write that is sometimes, or for, for many students, more compelling than what they see on the screen. Um, it, it can get kind of redundant to, to write a program and see the result on the screen and then write another program and see another result. And, and um, when you have a robot and a contest and the ability to do um, some interesting things that really changes the dynamic of, of you know, how motivated you are to learn that difficult uh, subject. A um, little bit about the microbit. Um, it's, it's, uh, it was distributed to 1 million um, students in Great Britain, middle school students, about eight years ago. No, sorry, four years ago. Uh, it was supposed to be five years ago, but there were some delays in the production. Um, at any rate, so here are some examples of using milk cartons to make uh, mechatronic um, fun creations. And it's uh, just an example of the many, many, many things that you can do with the microbit, even sans robot. Uh, make code is uh, for the younger crowd. Um, it's a great way to get started with programming, just uh, dragging blocks around, and um, and it fully supports the uh, the microbit. And it's uh, makecode.microbit.org is the link, and I definitely encourage you to go go there, not now, but uh, after the workshop and and try it out. Um, about Python. Um, Python has become a, a much more popular language. It, it, it's grown very quickly since the early 2000s. Um, and the reason is because you can, you can get a lot done with a much less severe learning curve 
than um, C or Java or C++, uh, especially um, computer applications. It's, it's um, being used greatly by non-computer science majors. For example, an electrical engineer, his, his or her forte is not necessarily going to be um, programming, but uh, having Python at their disposal, um, they can set up programs to um, interact with the computer and have the computer interact with hardware they connect to it um, in, in record time. It's, it, it makes it much um, easier. And uh, here we have the inventor of Python. He's a, uh, during his Christmas break, he went home and uh, Guido von Rossum, I believe is his name. And he, uh, he, he made this over Christmas break in the 90s. And, um, and it really uh, picked up a lot of momentum, even though he was doing it just for uh, entertainment's sake, I would say. Um, so Python has a lot of features uh, in terms of basically uh, it, it allows you, as I said earlier, to get stuff done quickly. Um, Damien George did a Kickstarter a few years back and, and he um, made Python that works on microcontrollers, the micro bit included. And um, so again, a microcontroller is like the device you've got in your microwave oven that's listening to that keypad, making the beep, turning the motor on and off. You write a program for it, you put it in a, in, in a device and it runs the device um, day in and day out. And um, the micro bit is an example of that. And Damien George adapted Python. He, he created MicroPython, uh, which is for microcontrollers. Now the micro bit is, um, I, like to, I like to explain it as a microcosm of a cell phone. Um, it's, it's the kind of technology that, that um, with a cell phone, you have a display. You can press buttons. You can use the GPS to know where you are. It's got a built-in compass. There, there's, um, there's, there's, uh, it's, it's able to communicate to other cell phone devices. And if, if we look at the micro bit here, uh, well, here is the display. It's, it's, a, it's a microcosm of it. So we just have a few lights to turn on and off, but that can give us some pictures. Uh, we've got our buttons to press to, uh, to talk to the micro bit, to interact with it. Um, here's the built-in radio. Now it can't go on a cell network, but it can certainly talk with um, other micro bits. Can everybody see my mouse, by the way? Okay, excellent. Thank you for the head nods and thumbs up. Um, uh, built-in radio. It has a compass, um, an accelerometer, which is a, a, a device that it can tell you, like, for example, if you shake it or if you come to an abrupt start or stop. And it also can measure uh, the way you tilt the micro bit or even orient it in space. It's a nice little accelerometer, actually. Um, it also has these, um, these pads down here. And these pads can be connected to peripheral circuits. Uh, this is where it kind of goes beyond the cell phone, is that uh, now you can uh, connect other things like a robot, in our case, um, or just individual circuits uh, to these electrical contacts and then write programs to monitor and, and, um, and control those circuits. Uh, are there any questions before I move on? Anybody want to jump in and say something? or? Okay, I'm gonna keep going because um, I wanna make sure that everybody uh, can get through the, the, the today's material. Um, important thing, the, uh, the micro bit is plug and play uh, regardless of your operating system. So if you have um, Mac, Chromebook, Windows, it's all the same. Whenever you plug in the micro bit, it just looks like a flash drive. And um, so school computers, normally allow flash drives to be connected. And uh, what that does is it removes barriers that other microcontrollers um, have where uh, you have to install a piece of software to make it work. With the micro bit, you can just plug it in and it works. And then with the online editor, um, you, th there's, there's no coordination with uh, ITs required in most, in most classrooms to uh, get the system to work. Okay, so, um, this is the part where we're going to switch over to hands-on. Um, but before I do that, again, uh, do we have any questions? Um, 
Is uh, Chuck, is there anything from the chat that you've noticed or? Uh, no, chat's going good. There was a question from Julio, which we answered, asking if the microbit can obtain its power from the USB cable as long as it's plugged in. Uh, that is, in fact, correct. Um, there's not enough power. Once you connect it to the CyberBot, uh, you're going to need the battery pack for that. But there is enough power just for the microbit. Uh, and then one more question that just came up from Matt. Do you suggest one CyberBot per student or can they share? Um, so, Matt, when I taught this in the classroom, uh, I had two to one, so two students to one cyberbot. Uh, micro bits, I would definitely try and get one micro bit per student, but you can share them if you need to. Uh, what's nice about, you know, the micro bits, a, a lower cost point, um, but the cyberbot definitely can be shared. Uh, and, and that was my first and second year students shared my cyberbots. Okay. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you for the question. So, uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, switch over, or, well, okay, so first thing is um, I would like everybody to go through one very crucial exercise, and, and that is um, I'm going to use a, um, a pair of, of windows, but what I would like you to do, actually I can do it with this, okay, so you have your... Um, your Zoom open, and you can see my presentation, or now you can see yourself. Um, what I want you to do, if you, if you don't have more than one monitor, or if you don't have um, a second um, device where you're watching, so, so some folks are going to have maybe their iPad where they're watching this, and then their computer where they're ready to uh, type in stuff. Other folks are going to have two, two monitors. So if you have two monitors, uh, go ahead and put the, you probably already got the, the Zoom interface in one monitor. But for those of you who are on a single um, laptop screen, um, what I want to do is make sure that you're ready to watch what's going on and uh, type in a program. So what I'd like you to do is um, have your Zoom interface on one side and then a Chrome browser instance on the other side. So we want to put your Zoom like, yeah, that's not really going to work. Okay, so let's imagine that this second Chrome browser here is our Zoom. And in fact, we can also use that as an example. Just go to learn.parallax.com. Andy, all I have to do is minimize out of full view, exit full view from the Zoom. Okay. They okay. can slide it over and they can have their uh, Google open or Chrome or whatever and have it split views. Okay, so um, so has everybody got that? Is everybody able to see um, your Zoom and a browser at the same time? If anybody is not able to do that, um, then we, we need to pay some attention to it. I'm getting thumbs up. Can we get a full vote? Can everybody please click their thumb up or thumb down? Okay. What was the question again? Uh, the, the question is, can we all get um, Zoom side by side mm -hmm. with, an, with a Chrome browser? Yep. And uh, can we all get a Chrome browser side by side with a Chrome browser? Those are the two important things we're going to be doing a lot in the. Uh, in the and coming again, any season. questions on setup or visibility? Uh, shoot us a, a text, a chat, and we'll uh, we'll help you out in the breakout room. All righty. So um, so what we're going to do is is here we are at learn.parallax.com, and um, notice down here we have uh, the the cyberbot. So. If you go to learn, I, I would like everybody to go to learn.parallax.com and then follow the Cyberbot link. So I'm going to hang out here at learn.parallax.com and just kind of point at the Cyberbot link so that everybody can follow that. It's in the chat if anyone needs it. Okay, so let me tap. Thank you, Chuck. Now, um, once we're here uh, in your other window, or rather, I'm sorry, the, the next place we're going to go is build your cyberbot. 
So once you're at the Cyberbot series, and, and uh, this, is the, um, this is where all the student resources go. And each of these tiles will take you to a little booklet that uh, guides the students and you uh, through a particular um, activity. And the one I want to look at is in Build Your Cyberbot. And then once you follow the Build Your Cyberbot tile, um, connect the micro bit. And hopefully you saw this this weekend as you were going through your homework preparing for this class. So the, the first thing I would like everybody to do is to gather, or, or everybody has already set aside all of these parts. And so what I would like you to do is gather them. And I'm going to do the same. So there's this, oh, nope, not the servo motors yet. <clears throat> The parts that were not shown were the freshly recharged batteries. Um, we want to have the, uh, the battery holder, the micro bit, the cyberbot board, and then two each of the flathead screws the white nylon washers, and the acorn nuts. So can I get some thumbs up when everybody's got all those things on their table and ready to go? Okay, and can I get a shout out then from anybody who, I, I, need, uh, I need somebody to say, hey, wait, or, um, or we'll just keep going. Not ready yet. Okay, th oh, thank you so much. So. Let us know when you have those items on your table next to your computer. And the best thing to do is, well, maybe the best thing to do is to have the, uh, is to have this, uh, this picture of the, as a reference. Okay, so how are we doing? Anybody? Anybody not ready? Speak up. I've got uh, a couple of folks unmuted, but no one's speaking up yet, unless they're still away shopping for parts. <laughs> okay then. Um, so this um, this web page will have you use it as your guide, but I'm going to show you first because there's a few things that I want to make sure are. Um, extra clear. So, um, so that the first part is going to be attaching the micro bit to your cyberbot board. And um, the way it needs to work is that um, when it's put together, you're going to have the display upward. So we don't want to have the part side upward. That won't be very helpful. We won't be able to, we want to be able to see the display as we're operating the robot. Um, now, another thing is that um, right here, there are um, some electrical uh, contacts that are, are spring loaded and the electrical contacts on the cyberbot board are going to press against those spring-loaded contacts. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow um, this microcontroller on the micro bit to talk to this microcontroller on the cyberbot board. Uh, they're going to basically share um, in the robotics program. So the, the micro bit will be programmed to direct the cyberbot board to do a number of uh, tasks that are uh, robotic. So um, what we need is a little little spacer. Hello, focus. There we go. Okay. Um, so the first thing to do is to uh, is to now. Uh, I just want you to watch. I don't want you to um, do it quite yet, but uh, we're going to into the outermost holes on 
the display side, we're going to put the um, we're going to put the two flathead screws. Then um, on those flathead screws, we'll um, we'll tighten those down with these uh, with these nylon nuts. Um, Andy. Yes. Sorry to check your work, but um, when you install that onto the board, I think that's going to be upside down. Another biggest fail. <laughs> I Sorry. Don't think I, I don't think anybody's going to have any competition with me on that <laughs> contest. Okay, so um, so here we go with the screws. So I got one in. I we'll want to cinch them down, but first I'm getting them both started. Yeah, that was dyslexia in action. And so this is, this is why we're going to um, all do this together. Um, so, so once you've got the, um, the screws so that they're sticking up, so that they're tightened down and sticking up from the board in the direction of the LED display, we've got everything we need to set it under, we're going to come up from underneath and put those two screws through the two matching holes in the Cyberbot board. Um, after that, we'll go ahead and tighten, we'll use the acorn nuts to, uh, to cinch those, to, to um, to pull those, or to to basically pull the um, pull the micro bit up against the contacts and hold it in place. All right, so there we go. So that's what you want it to look like when you're done. And um, I would like you again to use the. Uh, this page right here as a reference. And so we're going to have all of you go through and it, it shows you basically pay very careful attention to which side of the board, unlike me, uh, to which side of the board you run that flathead screw through and then tighten the, um, tighten the nut. Give us a thumbs up if you're ready to go. Give us a hand clap if you need more time. All righty. I realize if so, you're working, it's hard to click, but okay, we got okay, it. Okay, so so let's let's have everybody do that, and then um, as we uh, as each of you finishes, go ahead and give us a shout out that you're done. Um, so Andy, Sarah says she doesn't have acorn nuts in the package. Can you refresh our memory? Where what bag that came out of? Um, you recall? that should be in a small bag of parts. Um, Sarah, I. All the rest of the screws and nuts and bolts? I believe so. Um, I will, and I'm tempted to go. I, in my they are in a, um, the acorn nuts are in a little tiny bag with um, the other, the screw and the nylon nuts. And okay, that's so, it. Okay, thank the you. Screws. So, Sarah, did you nuts. find the screws and the nylon nuts, but not the acorn nuts? Or are you looking for all? I found them. I found them. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, it, it's my, I posted the link to the instructions. The instructions actually aren't on a slide. They're on the learn.parallax.com site under the connect your micro bit. Sure thing. I know you're working with both hands. It's hard to click and work with both hands, but give us a hand clap if you're looking for some more time. Okay, I got a hand clap. Yeah, I'm, I'm mainly watching to see how many people are still looking down and their shoulders are kind of moving around as they're putting stuff together. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you, Robert.
So I saw Mark had a four-legged coworker um, with him before. Look like a baby puppy. Inquiring minds want to know, Mark, how old is that baby puppy? Anyone else have a four-legged coworker nearby? Bring them on the screen if you do. All right, Cornelius, thanks. Sheila, thanks. Teresa, we love to see four-legged coworkers. Two-leggers too, Debbie. I see in the background you've got a two-legged coworker back there. My coworker likes to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, that's what my four-legged co-worker is doing. She's sound asleep. <laughs> oh, Debbie, there's a there's a beautiful pup. And I have two big dogs, a shepherd doodle and a um and a lab shepherd mix, and they're all taking a nap. So I'm sorry, a shepherd doodle? Yes. So big curly. I'll bring her later. She's adorable. She's <laughs> just a big giant fuzzball. Hand clap if you're looking for some more time. Hey, Andy, I got a question for you. Yes, go ahead. So on your micro board controller, you have the red on there. Mine is blue. Does that matter about the color? OK, on okay. On your on, micro bit. The haircut. Oh, OK. So um, the, the color of the micro bit does not matter. They just come in, I don't know, Chuck, is it four oh. colors? Uh, four oh. colors. There's a green, yellow, red, and blue. And it's called a haircut. And no. All micro bits are created alike, except the haircut is just Come here. They want luck of the draw, whichever one you pull out of the bag. Okay, thanks. Come here. Come here. Sometimes if we're working with remote control devices, we'll pair the colors up, but it doesn't, right. otherwise Come it really here. doesn't matter. Oh, there, there is, Lori. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's a big boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, Denise has no acorn nuts. Um, we, we can use steel ones for now. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Andy, right, and then we can locate them. Um, Denise, we're happy to uh, uh, join afterwards. Uh, maybe if you can share, can't share screens, we'll take a look at your supply kit. But for now, we can use any of the steel nuts that are in your pack to uh, secure the board to the CyberBot. Yeah, so, um, so what Chuck is saying is, is that in, just in place of the acorn nuts, we would still need, I believe, I'm undoing this to check and see. Yeah, so um, you'll definitely need the nylon nuts to go on the screw. But yes, you can use a steel nut up top here. If you are missing an acorn nut. Make sure, by the way, that those, um, that those nuts are, are firmly finger tight. We, we do include a, a small wrench in the kit, which you can also use, but please don't apply too much pressure, especially not on the acorn nuts, because it is possible to strip the threads. Oh. So firmly finger tight is the best way to go on those guys. I see a few heads still looking down. Can we get a, either a shout out or a hand clap for anybody who needs more time? Does this mean we're ready to go? All right, everybody, you're doing great. Okay, so uh, the next step will be to Connect your USB. Now, this is where we're going to depart from the tutorial slightly. Uh, this, this slideshow has it set up so uh, somewhat differently from the, um, from the actual documentation. Uh, in the interest of time and also showing a little bit about um, subsystem testing and uh, demonstrating a, a few of the options, uh, we're going to um, connect uh, servos to this, but first we have to connect the USB. So, um, so we're gonna connect USB and then run our first program. So uh, everybody please connect uh, this end of the USB cable to your micro bit and the other end to your computer.
And after that, after that, I would like to you to open a file browser. So if you have Windows, that's going to be Windows Explorer, which I'm showing here. If you have Mac, that's going to be Finder, which looks rather similar to Windows Explorer. And um, if you have a Chromebook, I don't remember the name of it. I think it's Files. Somebody, any Chromebook experts, please correct me if I'm wrong. OK, now once you've got your file browser open, um, let's make sure that you can see your microbit as a flash drive in your file browser. So let me know when we've got thumbs up for that. All right. Good work, everyone. Now I'm going to rely on you guys to say, hey, help me out either in chat or on the, um, or, you know, I'm falling behind either on chat. Right. Or we're, we're in file browser. Then where are we supposed to go? What are um, we clicking well, on? first of all, just, just see if you can find your micro bit on the left. Gotcha. Uh, that's, well, actually, that's a crucial. You'll need, you'll need to find your micro bit on the left and know where it is. Okay. And then you'll need to find your downloads. And mm -hmm. ideally sort your downloads so that the most recent file comes to the top. All right, so. So we want to sort our file so that the most recent download is at the very top. That's the day. All right. So. Am I so, supposed to click on the micro bit, Bert? Or? Um, well, we can click on the micro bit just to see, you know, hey, it's here. Here's our details.txt file and micro bit.htm. Those, those two are what you want to see if you click the micro bit. But okay. where you'll want to be in your file browser is in downloads, because the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a program, download it, and drag it from downloads into the micro bit in order to make the program go. Oh, so if I don't see anything other than what I downloaded from four days ago, that's okay? That is perfectly fine. Um, All right. But the most important part is that the, what you see from four days ago is your most recent download. It, it'll make it handy because basically anything, any program you write will trickle to the top because it's going to end up in your downloads. Let's gotcha. take a look at how that works. Okay, so the next thing I'd like you to do is go to python.microbit.org, python.microbit.org. And your browser should resemble what we see here on the screen. The link is in the chat if anyone is having trouble typing. Uh, now, I, I see, a, I finally got my chat, by the way. Um, I see a comment. I believe that should be, uh, or um, yeah. asking if python.microbit.org slash v slash 2.0 is correct. And notice that after I hit enter, um, that is exactly what I got here is, is that that's where it redirects you to. So python.microbit.org is, um, is what I typed in. But as soon as I hit enter, it redirected me to python.microbit.org okay. slash 2.0. Okay. Okay. Are we all at python.microbit.org? Let's see some thumbs up. All right. Okay. So, um, the, it should open with a default program. And uh, what we can do is just simply download that default program. Um, so see this download button in the upper left? Let's go ahead and click it. And keep an eye on the bottom of your browser because microbit underscore program dot hex should appear there. So all you have to do is click this upper left download button. And then 
it should show you microbit program dot hex in the bottom left corner that that it just downloaded that in the bottom left corner of the Wait. of your chrome browser so when you hit download okay Can we save it directly to the uh, microbit folder rather than going to download? Yeah, well, yes. Um, mm -hmm. the, it's a little tricky because it's not really possible to right click download and then say save link as that won't necessarily get you what you want. Um, that's not going to give you the um, that's well, I have mine set up to when I when it it doesn't automatically. I have to tell it where to save it to. Okay, and that's that's what I wanted to show everyone. So thanks for bringing that up. You're right on track. Um, basically, uh, in you can go to settings. So there, there's a uh, three vertical dots in the upper right of your Chrome browser, and when you click those, you can go to settings, and you can. Um, as um, I'm sorry, I didn't see who, who said that, but uh, basically under advanced, uh, there's going to be downloads. And then you can turn on the setting that, that has, has it ask where to save each file before downloading. Um, I'm going to leave that off just because it's, uh, it's going to default to downloads. But if you have it going somewhere else, that is perfectly fine. The, the most important thing is just to have it go somewhere where you can find in your file browser very conveniently. That's top priority. And so, yeah, if you want to go in here, uh, three dots, settings, advanced, downloads, and then ask where to save each file. So you can turn that on if you want, and then you can, the file can go anywhere. Now, um, after I've downloaded it, um, let's take a look at our downloads. See right here? Microbitprogram.hex appeared in my downloads. We okay with that? Can everybody find microbitprogram.hex in their downloads? I see it in on the bottom of the screen where it says I downloaded it. Now okay, do you, see a little, do you see a little symbol by it? Little an symbol. arrow? Yeah. Click that symbol and select show in folder. Show in folder. Gotcha. Thank you. Because it wasn't there before. I thought, okay, I know there's a way it's supposed to. And is mine supposed to be showing the an arrow and an A? An arrow and an A. Oh yeah, mine's mine's doing something all here. I show you, mine's doing something all on its own. I'm having fun already, and I didn't even program anything. Oh mm -hmm. yes, so the microbit comes with a pre-installed um, default program that encourages you to press the buttons and experience <laughs> interfacing with the microbit. And so what we'll do is we'll um, we'll load in a different program here. Um, what this program is going to do is, is uh, repeatedly, it's going to, going to scroll hello world across the display, then display a heart, then wait for two seconds and repeat it all over again. And we'll talk more about the actual Python programming and how it works in the next session. Um, so, uh, so if you've got the default program loaded, we want to see a change in behavior after we load this program. Has, has everybody got um, I'd like everybody now to go to their file browser, find the microbitprogram.hex that they just downloaded, and take that and drag and drop it into your microbit drive. And watch what happens on your microbit over here after you do that. So check and make sure it scrolls hello world across the display and then displays a heart for two seconds. Yay. Yay. All right. Good job, everyone. Uh, and, Andy, one question. So we have a micro bit appearing as maintenance. How do we, how do we exit the maintenance mode? Oh, um, yeah. What you can do is um, go ahead and disconnect it from the USB and reconnect it 
if it shows up as maintenance, just be careful not to press and hold this. Do not press and hold this button as you reconnect it. We just want to, we just want to unplug it and then plug it back in without touching that button. And that should take it out of maintenance mode. And once it, once it's out of maintenance mode, you should be able to drag and drop that, uh, that micro bit, that, that hex file onto your micro bit to load the program. So that is the, that is the um, most basic way of, of writing and loading a program. Okay, now um, let's say that you want to change this program. Let's say that instead of image.heart, let's do image.smile. Um, and then we can rename the program. Uh, how about, uh, hello, hello, underscore, smile. All right, now that you've renamed it, we can download another one, or we can hit download again. So we have image.smile, we've renamed it hello smile, and notice that hello smile.hex has appeared in our downloads too. So I want everybody to, to do that. Oh man, um, let's see here. So I want everybody to do that and then take that hello smile.hex and drag that one into your micro bit. <laughs> and there we go with a smile. Okay, next thing, we have one program or one script that's named Hello Smile and another one that's named Microbit Program. Now, um, so next task is to load a program that you've saved before. Right now hey, we've got help. Andy, what does it mean that after it's all done running, if I keep getting this, um, this file does not have an app associated with it for performing this action? Please install an app. I mean, it does what it's supposed to, but afterwards um, it gives me this red X with an, uh, like an error message. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure what on your computer is monitoring to, to, to warn you about that, but let's I, uh, take a look. I, I don't want to do anything during the workshop since it's still okay. working for you, but okay. um, if you can spend a few minutes. Are you, I'm sorry. Are you, are you using a Mac? Because I'm getting the same thing. Are you using a Mac, Lori? No, I'm using a uh, desktop, HP. Okay. But I just hit, all I do is hit the X and it goes away. It's not affecting my program. So I'm just going to hit the X for right now and worry about, we'll figure it out later. Yes, by all means, please keep hitting the X. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, so we saved, we've already saved two scripts here. We've saved microbit program and we've saved hello. So right now you've got hello smile as the open program. Well, to get back to another program that you've saved, just go to the folder where you're storing it, downloads by default, find the program, the script that you want to reopen, and just drag it and drop it on your, on your browser. And when you do that, we'll get from image.smile back to image.heart. I want everybody to, I want to make sure everybody can do that. It's very important. Um, downloading uh, scripts that are in hex files and um, and then loading them is crucial. Um, but also being able to save it under a different name. So try dragging 
Hello, smile back in, try dragging microbit program back in. And this time, instead of dragging it into the microbit, we're just dragging it into the browser and we should see it open. Is there an easy way to go from the microbit from one program to the other or do you have to each time drag it from the download folder into the microbit? That's a really good question. We're coming up on an answer to that. Um, there is an easier way, and uh, it's actually the reason why um, we had you go through and update your firmware to 253 before the class. Um, so what, what you can do is see the second button over? It says, um, says connect. You can click the connect button, and then when you do so, it gives you a list of microbits connected to your computer, and most of us will just have one connected. But you have to select it, and then you can hit the connect button. So again, click the connect button, select your microbit, and then select connect. I'm gonna keep on canceling uh, because I'm gonna go through it a few times just so everybody gets to see the sequence of clicks I'm doing. And this time I did it for real. So, and we're doing it for why? Why are we doing that? We're doing that because now we can just change the program and download it uh, without having to go to our downloads. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, there's also a serial connection where we can see messages from our microbit and send messages to our microbit using a terminal, but that comes later. I keep getting an error about eject microbit before disconnecting. Is that something we should really be paying attention to, ejecting it or not? Um, no. Um, if you're unplugging them, yeah. I would say yeah. I would say ignore that for now. Chuck, have you seen that? I've never actually seen that. Yeah, on my Mac, I get that every time I load a new file through the drag and drop on the Finder. So uh, we just ignore it because it's just momentarily cutting power, and it thinks you're you're. USB, you know, unsafe ejection of USB. You're good to go. Oh, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So, n d does everybody have the the connected? Um, it should say disconnect, meaning that next time you click it, you're disconnect. You'll disconnect it. Um, so once you're connected, let's try uh, changing the program uh, some more. So let's do image.happy and uh, let's get rid of world and just maybe add a few exclamation points. Now, we still want to save everything that we want to get back to. So, uh, so let's rename this hello happy. Um, now, this, this button on the left is no longer your downloads button. When you want to download to save, you can click load save and then download project hex. You can also download just the script, which is the text version, uh, but as we'll see moving forward, there are a lot of advantages to download project hex. All right, can you okay. show me that again? Yes, absolutely. Uh, when you're connected, this button on the far left is now Flash. You can load it into, um, you don't have to use your file browser anymore to load it into your microbit. You can just click Flash. I'll, yep. get, I'll get back to showing you what you asked for. <laughs> you can just click Flash and see now I've got hello with exclamation points. And then the image.happy, which is a smiley face instead of just the smile. And I did that by just clicking the flash button because I'm connected. Um, now, in order to save, the third button over is the load save button. This is back to answering your question. When you click that third button, um, there's download project hex. And we click on that. Yeah, and that'll save it for you. Oh, cool. Okay. Cool. All right. So the next step, I'm getting ready here. Uh, so, so we just talked about 
how to basically save files, how to load programs we write, how to open files that we've saved previously. And um, so those are just basically the key skills for using this web programming interface. It's somewhat different from, for those of you who have used, uh, who have used other um, software development interfaces, it's, it's kind of different, but for a microcontroller and especially for the classroom, it works great because again, we didn't need to call the IT over and install any software at all. It was just ready to go since the microbit looks like a flash drive. Okay, so here we are with our microbit, and the next thing that we want to do is uh, find and connect our batteries and servos. So, uh, so I'd like everybody to grab, to, to find the servos that they fished out and the battery pack. And that's going to go right here. We can go ahead and turn the uh, power switch to the off position for those of you who have not done that. Um, the micro bit will keep running, but this main board is now off, the, uh, the Cyberbot board. Um, and so uh, there is a similar tutorial to this um, on the learn.parallax.com site, but uh, we're doing it a little bit of out of order, so I'm going to just guide you through that uh, using just my document camera. So uh, basically connect up your battery pack and um, make sure that your power switch is set to zero. So this little switch here needs to be set all the way to the left to zero. Okay. And uh, let's get some thumbs up when you've got that going. Where's the battery pack getting plugged into? Um, right, right here. There's a little barrel plug. Oh, there it is. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yeah, because I'm looking all over the back and going, I don't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, now, there's another page that I'd like everybody to go to. Uh, we were using this before. Uh, this page is a guide and um, a couple of steps below, we have connect power to the servos. And I'm gonna paste that into the chat now that I've got it at my disposal. So hopefully that came through to everybody. And um, this is an important part of the tutorial because it shows the, um, it shows two things. Um, it shows a little setting that we actually won't need to worry about right now. Um, but there is a, it's called a jumper. Uh, it's a little sleeve that goes over three pins that are, that are, uh, that are sticking up out of the board. And the little sleeve uh, came out of our manufacturing covering the 5V and center pin. And what that does is it sets our motor power to five volts, regardless of how much the batteries gives the board, you get five volts. Um, and uh, if you have rechargeable batteries, um, you can, if you want, unplug that sleeve and put it over the upper pin, V in, and the, the middle pin. And that will uh, basically, instead of five volts, your, um, your uh, servos will get whatever 1.2 times five battery cells adds up to. I think probably seven volts. Um, oh, that's interesting. Okay, um, so your servos are gonna have, um, color-coded cables, and um, it's, it's not showing in the picture, but connect your servos to the P18 and P19 pins that are sticking up in the upper right corner of your board, and uh, make sure to put the black wires at the GND level right here. See on to the right of your, um, uh, basically the white wires are gonna be closest to, edge of the, to the top edge of the board, the black wires are gonna be closest to 
um, your GND label that's below and to the right of those pins. So this is on the back. This is on the front where it's flashing in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, let's see. I, I'm going to bring up the. Uh, okay. So, so on the board here, am I rotated wrong? Okay. How's that look? Can you see my board okay? Uh huh. All right. So you're going to see see how uh, see how I've got the black, red, white next to my fingertips. Yeah. And I'm going to plug it. Uh, there's there's three small holes in the plug for the servo motor, and we're going to mate those to the three small pins that are sticking up in the upper right corner of the board here and then slide it down over those three pins. So the black is at the bottom. Yeah, the Correct. black is at the bottom. All right. Closest to this black header and the white breadboard. The right. By the top edge. And we want to uh, we want to plug it into the ports labeled. Let's see if we can get some focus on it. P18 and P19. See that? Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Got you. And then this one's going to, it's going to go in the exact same way. Yes. Gotcha. And then is there supposed to be that little black thing sticking up next to it? Little black thing sticking up. Oh, uh, I think you're probably referring to the jump, the power selection jumper. I, I just talked about that. Yes. Okay. I um, want to make sure because you didn't say it would have this little black thing in there. <laughs> yeah. So this little black tab right here is what yeah. you're asking about. Yeah. So that's that's used to set your power to either five volts or directly from the battery pack, and that only gotcha. goes to the motors. Gotcha. Cool. All right. So now that we've got um, this connected, and give me a shout out, anybody, if you're. Um, you're still working on it, but if not, let's go ahead and see if we can get these guys to start turning. Um, the goal here is going to be to adjust the servo. You will need, uh, make sure to fish out your screwdriver. You'll need that next. And, and the goal here is going to be to run a program that tells the servos to stay still. Um, so we call it centering in electronics speak. So I'm going to say center underscore servos. That'll be the name of our next program. And um, this program is going to be a doozer. So be ready to start typing like crazy. Everybody well, then you lost me. And ready? <laughs> oh. No, I typed slow. So you okay. lost me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's okay. And multivariate calculus uh, review is optional. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, step one. Oh boy. I I actually skipped a step. So we're we're going to. I guess I guess I'll I'll write the program, but um, we're going to need to do something after we have the program written. Okay. Instead of from microbit import, we're going to say from cyberbot import star. The cyberbot library actually gives, tell, brings in the microbit too. It, it has this statement, the, the cyberbot module has this statement in it. Um, and we're going to need to go get that module, but let's just type the program first. Um, the cyberbot module has um, a bot class and uh, bot of 18 underscore, sorry, dot servo underscore speed of zero is what we need to type. And then copy and paste that twice and take the 18 and the second one and make it a 19. All right, so this is our wickedly difficult program that requires calculus and mad typing skills. So let me know when you've all got that ready. And then you just highlight it to copy and paste it below? Yes, indeed. So you can basically just shade it, yeah. right click, copy, 
And then paste. Paste and then change it to 19. You got it. Yay. Okay. Nice. All right, so this program is not ready because unlike, unlike Microbit, which is built in, um, this little Cyberbot module here does not come with the Microbit. Um, they couldn't necessarily envision all of the modules that were going to be created for it. And so Parallax created a module, and we need to let this online programming system know about that. And so, um, so I'm going to paste you a link into the chat. Um, so this, is, uh, this link is coming from uh, learn.parallax.com, Cyberbot, the same spot we always went to. But the third tutorial is called Add Modules to Your Microbit. And so I'm going to uh, just download this. And it'll appear in my downloads. Whoopsie. Uh, when I follow the link, I'm sorry, this is the link I'll, I'll paste to you. OK, here it comes. Paste. Okay, when you follow that link, it should, uh, it should automatically download a, um, a zip file. I'm sorry, you have to, you have to click the, uh, the zip file. Make sure to click the version 8.0, the most recent one. Uh, we make some of the older versions available for developers, but you want the latest. So that's 8-0. And then Great. you'll have a, you'll have a zip to go to in your downloads. And then put it in our folder. Um, actually, yeah, the main thing is to, to find it and unzip it. So you're going to have to go to your downloads mm -hmm. and then unzip that file. Mm -hmm. Right click and extract. So for, uh, for Windows, you'll probably right click and extract all, and then it'll give you okay. a dialog. For Mac, I think you can just double click it and it should just make a folder. Right. Okay. Then it's called Cyberbot Microthon. Do we, it just a yellow folder after it's unzipped? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, it should show as Cyberbot MicroPython. And um, it's got some example programs in it. And it has all the modules that we have made for the Cyberbot board. Oh, cool. and, and each of these modules enables a, a different thing that you can do. So we've got um, we've got Cyberbot, we've got TV remote. That's a cool one. Ping is an ultrasonic sensor, and so you can import these various ones. And and we had import Cyberbot Pi, so we need to uh, we need to add that to our uh, to our our project. So uh, the next step is going to be to have your, um, your Cyberbot folder contents visible and your, uh, your online editor visible. Then in your online editor, we want you to click the load save button. All right, wait a minute. Okay, I gotta go to downloads. Yeah, actually, here's a better way. I apologize. Just, okay. just go to your, your online editor and click load save. Ah, okay. So we got to go file link. So let me go back to, I got to go to the, this dude. Um, maybe I shouldn't have whiplash reverse direction like that. Sorry. Okay. And then. Okay. So again, that's load save or browse for file. Okay. Browse for file. All right. And now don't go into the zip. Make sure to go into the folder you unzipped. And go and, and find cyberbot.py. Select cyberbot.py and then click open. And then you'll get a message saying, hey, we added this to the file system. So once you've done that, let's make sure. Click load save and then show files. Where's load save? Okay, load and then save and then show files. Yeah, there load save and then show files. 
And if you can see Cyberbot, it means you're ready to go. Yay. All right. Um, and I need it, you know, please shout out, raise your hand, whatever. If you need, if you need this, if you need me to go through this one more time. So I'm really behind because I can't get to the site with a Cyberbot thing. I'm on two different computers, so I can't just click on the link because my Cyberbot's connected to the other computer, not the Zoom thing. Okay. And so I missed. Let me call out the um, bunch. Andy, we can we can head to a we can head to a breakout room. I've got a couple folks who are who are looking to get caught up. Um, if if you want to give me a thumb up, I can uh, I can put you in a breakout room. Uh, CC. Thank you. Uh, Rosa, Jamie, CC Rosa, Jamie, Matt, CC Rosa, Jamie, Matt. Stand by one second. Um, CC Rosa, Jamie, Matt, CC, um, Jamie, Matt, Rosa. Uh, I got CC, uh, Jamie, Matt, Rosa. Anyone else? Uh, Sheila and Demetrius. Sheila, Demetrius. Uh, Matt Kim, and come your way, yeah? Um, anyone else? When I look away, I don't see in the thumbs up go away. So I have uh, uh, CC, Demetrius, Jamie, Matt, Rosa, Sheila. Uh, anyone else need a breakout room? Okay. And Cyber Matt coming up. Where's Cyber Matt? Cyber Matt's gone. Uh, Josh, coming your way, yeah? <laughs> Thanks, gang. Uh, breakout rooms opening up. Anyone else needs to head to that breakout room, let me know. Okay, Andy. Robert, do you need a breakout room too? Okay. Robert, go in the breakout room. Anyone else? Okay. Andy, I think we're good to go. Yeah, it looks like we lost Andy. <laughs> That's awkward. Seeing as I don't sing or dance. Mm -hmm. hey, Jack, here. Andy's computer uh, just stuffed him a Windows update really quick and he had to reboot. So, yeah. <laughs> I just love Windows. Don't oh, you? Oh. Um, I have a quick question. Um, as we put load these um, Python files to Microbit, does it save them? Or every time our students come in every new day, are they going to have to reload these? So the micro bit stores the last program it received. It cannot store multiple files onto one micro bit. You can only store one executable at a time. But um, the laptop will store anything that's downloaded to it. If you flash it, it's not necessarily stored. Uh, it's not okay, safe. I'm sorry. I, I, mean, I need to clarify. The interface, the micro bit site, the python.microbit.org site. Yep. So we are. Um, loading these Python Cyberbot example files. And yeah. I was just about to load the rest of the ones from uh, cyber.org, you know, the feedback, the ping, but will the interface, the online interface keep them all or am I gonna have to reload those if I come back tomorrow and reopen up this sure, sure. Um, so website? It, it'll only keep them if you download it, uh, if, you, if you save it to a local drive. Uh, so the first thing we did, Andy did this morning by clicking download. Uh, that saves it to your local drive. By clicking flash, it does not save a version to your local drive. So you'll need to save that separately. And if you're, if the kids are working on a Chromebook, they can't save it anything on their Chromebooks, but they can save to their cloud or whatever. So basically, is that what it will do? My recommendation for, for folks working on Chromebook is always to have a, a, a doc open on the side and then just copy and paste the text into the doc. Um, gotcha. but there, is a file, there is file structure on Chromebooks that you can download to. Um, but my recommendation, if, if you know, if you, if you don't want them to save it to the computer, have some kind of Word doc or, or Chrome doc that open that they can then copy and paste the text into. Yeah, sure, I have help. both, Thanks. so it's okay. I was just curious on the Chromebooks. Uh, can you all hear me? I'm back. Yep. yep. Hi. Hi. Wow. Uh, my computer, when I tried to zoom in on that web address, it um, it restarted. <laughs> So, uh, so we're back and um, it's like I'm gonna need to catch up with you guys here. Um, so bot of 18 dot servo speed of uh, zero. I, I have a question about the cyberbot.py file. Sure, Lisa. Yeah. Um, so we had to load it in order to do this program that we, you know, that you were just typing in. 
Um, yes. If we create a new program that's going to be using um, Cyberbot, do we need to then load Cyberbot.py again for every program that we're writing to use, or is it somehow like it's like oh we already have done this? Well. Um, if you start by just going straight to the site, um, uh, let, me, let me show you how to, okay, so the answer is if you start by just going straight to the site and hand typing in a program, yes. But if you open a program where you already added it, uh, it'll be stored in the hex file. Oh, okay. And so, um, so if I go to my downloads and then uh, load this guy, oh. That's right. I got to reconnect here. So we could sort of have a template file for students to use or encourage them to have a cyberbot template that had uh, cyberbot.py preloaded. Okay, so I just typed in cyberbot template as the name. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, before I save it, I need to, you know, find that library that I unzipped or the, uh, the module that I unzipped, the cyberbot module. So here we are, cyberbot.py. And now it's been added to the file system and here it is in my file system. So now I know that I'm ready to go. Uh, just before I save it, I'm going to load it into my, um, my micro bit, make sure I didn't make any syntax errors. Okay, looks like it went in just fine. So now let's save it as a hex file. Remember the load save button oh, and then save. download project hex. And then here is your Cyberbot template in your downloads. And if we didn't save it as a template, then ours just says center, center servo hex. Yeah, and that's okay. fine too. You can use that. But basically, if I reopen hello happy dot hex, mm -hmm. it does not have cyberbot.py in it. See, it's, it's all we have is hello happy. The, the oh, main gotcha. Okay. okay. But then if I go back to center servos or cyberbot template, whatever you named it, uh, then looking in there, lo and behold, here is the cyberbot.py file. Okay. All right, so let's, um, let's do the last step of the day, which is to center the servos. <clears throat> Gotta rotate this guy and um, Maybe manually focus to infinity. Mm. We can see it. Okay. Um, so after you've loaded the program, just basically move this switch to, um, to two, the three position switch, the power switch. Uh, position one is bored with no more motors and position two all the way to the right is bored with motors. And when you do that, we oh. want to see, they won't necessarily spin as fast as this, but they should probably spin kind of slowly. And um, if you look in the servo, let's see if it'll focus here. So real quick, while Andy's adjusting this, if your servos are moving, that means they're not centered. Centered means the wheels should be should not be moving; they're stopped. Yeah. Okay. So, so program, if it clicked one time, it moved one time, and yeah. then didn't move after that. That's fine. If it's not moving after that, your servos are centered. So I got or a blinking they, red light. Be... That's okay. Okay. Light. So you got a blinking red light up in the upper right corner. Uh huh. That means your batteries are dead. Oh, lovely. Um, so we'll need to we'll need to have you finish this off. Just watch closely because okay. um, now, do you have two green lights at uh, below the yeah. switch? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's unusual that the servo that the servos come perfectly centered. Um, I usually, if you use the screwdriver and you insert it into the hole where the cable comes out, um, tell me if it starts moving if you twist it gently. It takes a really light touch, by the way. We want to adjust this. Um, we want to adjust the screw inside the servo. It's actually called a, 
potentiometer. We want to carefully adjust that screw so that, um, so that the servo stops turning and do that for both servos. And just to reiterate what Andy said, it's a very delicate adjustment. It's a, a cheap plastic potentiometer. Don't push too hard, don't twist too hard. But with the Phillips head of your screwdriver, you're making an adjustment so that the, the, the what they're called horns, that plus shape on the servo is called a servo horn. You're trying to make that stop rotating. Yeah, imagine that you're a surgeon. Yeah. Use that light of a touch. So it might help if I put my batteries in right. Denise. Oh, was that it? <laughs> well, we'll see. Blinking lights. Um, so Sarah, your, your servos are continuously moving. That's, that's fine. That's how they come from China. We have to adjust them with this potentiometer. You're going to take the screwdriver and where the wires come out, there's a little yellow recessed fixture. You're trying to adjust that to make the wheel stop. Yeah. Well, so mine, mine little... came up because it, it made one move and they're directly centered and the red light's gone. Okay. Well, to, to prove to yourself that they are truly centered and that something else is not amiss, mm -hmm. um, ad slightly adjust one of those, one of the screws and one of the servos. If it starts turning slowly, you're good. If, if adjusting that screw even a little bit does not result in rotation, then um, we might have a problem. Okay, say that again. Okay, so you, can you see the little um, recess? Oh by yep. where the cable comes out of the, the servo. Yep. Okay, so this, um, this right here is what you wanna turn. And if you turn it to a certain position, it will stop the servo. But if you turn it away from that position, that optimal position, the servo should start turning. Okay, so if I turn it clockwise, yeah, and only just a little bit. If, if you turn it just the slightest amount and the servo doesn't start moving, we have another thing that we'll want to troubleshoot on your system. And then if I turn it the other way, it should move? Well, you want to you wanna basically, if you turn it anywhere away from where it was, it should start moving. And it, you okay. can turn it even the slightest bit. And what you have to do is you have to turn it back and forth until you find that perfect position where the servo horn this little uh, star-shaped mm -hmm. um, appendage on the servo, when that stays still, then your servo is centered, meaning that the program, which is saying we want a speed of zero, is actually resulting in a servo speed of zero. Well, in one of mine, I can't turn it at all. Okay. Um, can we get you to a breakout yep. room? Sure. All right, Lori, let me send you to a breakout room. All right, because it's not turning at all. Okay. Yeah. How, how about everybody else? How are we doing? Okay. Well, let's test one last test then to make sure that the servos are uh, running well. Let's try uh, making one maybe go uh, 20 now that we're centered and let's try making the other go negative 20. And uh, load that program. And we want to see some opposite direction of servo travel. Okay, um, so the servos, I'm getting some chats that servos are not moving. If they were and you adjusted them to not moving, that's a good thing. If they're not moving from the start, then we may need to do some troubleshooting. Denise Madden, um, Akash, can I send you to a breakout room? Brian also. Um, Denise, Matt, Akash. Um, sorry, my list of Participants isn't in order, so I have to. There we are. Um, Andy, can you put your program on the screen that's turning the servos in opposite directions? Roger that. So all I did was change those zero, change the first zero to negative or to twenty, 
and then the second zero to 20. And that's going to make the servos turn slowly. And then I hit the load button. My pet companion didn't quite like them moving. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Yeah, we, we have cats and they, they have over the years sternly disciplined our robots and let them know who's boss as they uh, roll around the floor. And um, so if you go back to zero, we want to see the servo stop again. So I, I just change it back to zero and note that the servos are not um, turning anymore. Anyone else looking for help getting the servos to either move or not move? Give me a thumb up or unmute. Yeah, I was in the other breakout room that the program opens um, stepwise, but I missed the step to put that in. Matt, you're breaking up a little bit. I heard you missed a step, but I can't tell what step you missed. Can you chat us, Matt? Uh, sure, Rosa, coming your way. So I had a quick question. Uh, mine are working like perfectly. Excellent, uh, Eric. And I know you said something about the power. So there's like a zero, one, two. What is the one for on the power slide? So, so uh, imagine with the robot that uh, you're running a program that's telling the motors to do things in response to sensors but you just want to actually see what the sensors are seeing without having the bot try to roll off mm -hmm. the table. Um, in that case, you would set the switch to position one because what position one does is it supplies power to everything but the motors. And then once you're ready for the robot to start going somewhere, then you'd change it to position two. Um, okay, so here we are in one with uh, one out of focus light on. And um, see if I can do anything to get this guy to focus. Um, and then basically position two is it just adds the servos to the party and you should see two lights. Got it, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and so uh, most importantly, speed control. So um, you can actually try 50 and 50, or 50 and you know, negative 50, whatever, 50, 20. Um, and then in that case, in this case, you would have one servo turning counterclockwise more rapidly than the other. I don't know how well that's coming through on the zoom, but this servo is turning slowly at a speed of 20. And then this one is turning more rapidly at a speed of 50. And you can go anywhere between negative 100 and positive 100. Right. And if you're less than zero, it'll turn um, clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So this motor control is what we want to have. And then um, for homework assignment, what we're going to do is, let's see here. I'm going to chat you this link. I will also email it. Because uh, what we're going to have you do for next time is build up your Cyberbot. Uh, as you do that, it's really important to note that um, you can navigate to the next page down here at the bottom. So you'll be going page by page through this. Some of it you've already done. But here, for example, you're in build the chassis. And notice that um, there's some sub pages that you're going to visit. So you'll gather all these parts. And then it shows basically a before and after picture of every step. So here's the parts you gathered. And then here's the parts after you've put it together going to the next page, taking apart the servos. Well, only a little bit. And then uh, the before and the how-to and the after picture. 
So uh, you'll want to follow all the way through this Build Your Cyberbot tutorial and have your Cyberbot built up and ready to go for um, Wednesday. I'm also going to send you out some homework and try to get better at Zoom. Oh, Build Your Cyberbot. Who posted it? From Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the, uh, the YouTube of this will come up in the afternoon. How many of you have gotten speed control? Have you, have you tried uh, running your servos at different speeds and then stopping them again? Mostly thumbs up. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. And then we've got some folks in breakout rooms. So um, I think that is about it for, um, for today's main workshop. Um, email me if you got stuck. Um, and we can actually set up um, a time to uh, after the workshop. If let's let's say that uh, we couldn't get you all the way through, um, and you're feeling stuck, email me, and I'll set up a time to contact you to to walk you through um, wherever you got stuck and didn't get unstuck. Um, the YouTube video will come up. I'll include that with the uh, that link with the homework, and. Um, and again, so you're, you're going to basically do the build your cyberbot tutorial. Um, I'll include this link. Uh, there will be a few other items, and we'll have you start um, populating our uh, biggest fail, win, and and uh, coworkers um, PowerPoint slideshows. I'll share them out with you in the email as well. So, uh, question? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Chuck. So my team is available uh, for next couple minutes to hang out and answer questions as they come up. Some really good chats coming up. I'm going to address in just a minute. Um, I've asked Ken if we can if we can stop recording and get ready to share it this afternoon. Um, we're going to make sure everyone has this link so you can get caught back up if you missed any steps. Um, but for the next couple.